Welcome to my channel. My name is Lizzie. I read books, often fantasy and sci-fi, and I write books. And today it's actually been a little while since I last spoke to you. I have been filming book reading vlogs for like the last six months and then not editing them and I have got so much like raw footage sitting on my hard drive making me feel anxious and I'm never gonna get around to editing it all. So I've decided to just have a clean slate. You could, you could call this like a best of the last six months. The books I've been reading that I want to talk to you about. There's nothing, I don't think there's anything I've read that I've like passionately hated. So um, I've been reading a little bit less recently. I've been quite busy with various life things. I've gotten really into sewing. Uh, so I sewed these, these trousers, what I'm wearing. So that's taken a chunk out of the time in which I would read. I've also been reading some real chunks, like a lot of the books that I have read are enormous. <laughs> At least three that I can think of that are like around like the 900 page, 1000 page mark. No, four. Four. A, a lot of chunky books, which has kind of uh, slowed down my averages. I'm not worried about it, I'm not mad about it, I've enjoyed a lot of the things which I've been reading. In case you were wondering, my reading goal for this year is the same as my reading goal for literally every year, which is to read 26 good books. Like, 26 books which I would rate like a 4 or a 5 out of 5. Um, I read more than that and sometimes you want to read something that you're going to hate and it will be garbage but the aim is for the quality, <laughs> for the enjoyment and I think I've hit it for this year, I think I'm happy. I don't have many of the books here, a lot of them are either, have either kind of gone into storage or have gone back to the library because it's been a real library kind of time recently. Um, I've actually had to stop taking my library card to the library. I now just return books and don't take any more out because it's getting ridiculous. I've been reading a lot of Stephen King. I've been working my way very slowly through the Dark Tower series over the last couple of years. Much like Stephen King, I took a huge years-long break between um, The Wastelands and Wizard and Glass. Wizard and Glass is the book I DNF'd the last time I tried to read this series. I did I did not particularly enjoy it this way around. I actually skipped about like 200 pages in the middle of it because I cared so little about the plot of this book. Basically it's got our main story timeline as a framing bit and then the whole like more than two thirds of the book is the most prolonged flashback in book bloody history uh, about Roland's past and I didn't care. It was quite pure western, whereas most of the Dark Tower is like a cool blend of like sci-fi and fantasy and horror. Yeah, like if I was doing a reread of this series I would skip this book completely I think. Yeah, it reminds me a bit of uh, Eyes of the Dragon which I also read and I also didn't care about. But after this I also read Wolves of Bacala and I loved that one. I thought that was great. I think it might be one of the, my favourite Dark Tower books so far. I would rank it up with the drawing of the two, which I also really liked. I love it when there's a lot of world hopping. I just, I find it so fun and so like imaginative and I love the mashup of having like alcoholic priest in 70s New York fighting vampires plus a bunch of cowboys in <laughs> like in a fantasy realm uh, saving, saving a village of children from mysterious monsters. This book just really had everything for me. I, I loved it, I thought it was really well paced and it was kind of unproblematic. I thought it was going to be really dodgy at the beginning because there is an issue of something, I won't do any spoilers, but there's something's happening with a female character's body and the male characters are kind of talking about it between themselves and it seems like she's not going to have much agency or autonomy over herself and it was really unsettling to read that <laughs> but it got resolved and it was good uh it all worked that all worked out and i thought it was handled as well as it could have been by like i don't know a male writer i thought it was as good as it was gonna get with stephen king 
I would say he's not like 100% on his depiction of like women or black people or anything. But you know, he gives it a really good go and I don't think he does a terrible job, all things considered. Um, <laughs> yeah, I also read Carrie, uh, which was great. It's, you know, very focused on its themes, which are like teenage girls, adolescence, how horrible it is to be an outsider, bullying, sexuality. I preferred reading like Wolves of the Carla, but that's just my personal reading taste. I think Carrie would be a much better introduction <laughs> to Stephen King for a more general reader. Oh, and Needful Things is the other Stephen King I read. Another really great Stephen King book for me. It was really fun. It is uh, one of the big ones, but it's very pacey, it's very easy to read, it kind of like flies by. And it also feels relatively focused compared to some of his other longer works. Like Carrie, it's quite like a bombastically uh, violent book. There's a quite a lot of like excessive destruction. They're books with a lot of brutal stuff happening in them, but it's still, I don't know, I still really enjoyed it. I completely forgot to explain the plots of all of these books. The Dark Tower is an epic fantasy series, which I am midway through, but basically it's about a cowboy in a fantasy post-apocalyptic universe hunting for the Dark Tower. Carrie is about Carrie. <laughs> I don't know if I need to explain it, but she is a teenage girl who is being bullied and develops telepathy and results happen. And then Needful Things is about a mysterious shop that appears one day in a small town and selling strange items to the residents and bringing out another side of them in the process. It's all kind of about the the, the importance we imbue in material possessions and kind of how we can become emotionally um, philosophically attached to things that don't really deserve it and how it can like distort our lives and all about yeah the way that our dreams and desires could be used against us and it's like small town multi-person drama which is my favorite kind of Stephen King genre and yeah it was a real romp I really liked Needful Things 10 out of 10 to that book I'd recommend it to anyone who likes Stephen King I don't know if I'd recommend it to as like the first thing a non-Stephen King person should read. But yeah, if you've read a couple of other Stephen King's books, I think you'd like Needful Things. I think this is the last of my really long reads. I read Middlemarch by George Eliot. I really, really liked this book too. This is like a new favourite for sure. I will definitely be rereading this book. I thought it was very mature, very wise, very witty, but also very kind of like kind-hearted take on like humans and desires how and how people's lives kind of turn out it's a bit like talking to a very a very kind of witty and wise friend about the incredibly chaotic love lives of all the people that you know <laughs> is the feeling i got from this book except that all the people that i know live in a fictional town 200 years ago and i've always had the impression in the past that this book was really about like victorian politics and the land reform movement and I was expecting it to be very dense and have quite a lot of um, Thomas Hardy-esque like depictions of crushing rural poverty. But it wasn't like that at all. It's mostly about, yeah, romances, people's love lives. It kind of tracks the, the progress and consequences of several marriages that happen. And yeah, I, I don't think the stakes are as high as I thought they were going to be. By any means, it's just um, just a really good book. I don't know if I am now a George Eliot convert to, like, I don't know if I'd put her above Jane Austen. I think they're different writers. We don't need to make the, the women authors fight. They can both be good. But yeah, I really liked Middlemarch. Yeah, the last of the chunks, the humongous two big books that I read in 2024 was The Dragon Bone Chair by Tad Williams. Um, this is 90s epic fantasy. It is very classic, it is very slow, the inciting incident takes about 250 pages to happen, the descriptions are beautiful, it's got very well written prose, it feels like a um, living in a dungeon synth album, but one of the more cheerful ones. And I, I really enjoyed reading it, but it is slow paced. It's also not what I would call edgy, especially by the standards of modern epic fantasy, 
like it's very classic in its character types and its kind of story beats. It, do, it doesn't do much like subversion of expectations. Maybe it did at the time, it's quite hard to tell because I think like the fantasy genre has evolved so much in 25 years, like what feels cliched now might actually have felt very fresh at the time. But I think this book is still worth a read because it's just beautifully written. Um, the main character, Simon, is an amazingly annoying twerp for at least two thirds of this book. It's him growing up from like an ignorant child to a grouchy teenager to, by the end, like a passable human being. <laughs> passable. Yeah, I did not need to be in like a 14 year old boy's head for that long. Simon. Uh, I actually switched to, to the audio version of this halfway through because it was when I was in the middle of my sewing madness and I I listened to the free reading that Tad Williams did of it on YouTube which added hours more to an already huge endeavour because he it's like a very informal reading and he does like a lot of chatting in it. I think it's semi-official, I think it's on YouTube with his blessing even though it's not been put on his official channel and he's got a lovely reading voice it's a lovely atmosphere. I kind of enjoyed the bit where it's just him talking about his life and how the writing's going in each segment before he gets into the reading. It feels like a really comforting podcast slash audiobook. I would recommend it, <laughs> I guess, if you're interested in this in this story. It's very it feels very wintry, it feels very cozy. I will I will read the follow-ups. It might take me a while to get around to it because it did feel a bit like a of an epic endeavour, this book. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. And then a short one which I really liked was There is no anti-memetics division by QN TM Quantum. It is self-published actually. It's a product of like an internet creative writing open source forum project which I can't remember the name of but I shall write it on the screen. You can read all of the stories featured in this book for free on the website as well but the, the little self-published physical book that I bought I thought was well worth it. It was lovely, very nicely designed and it's a collection I'll probably reread. It's all to do with um, anti-memetics are the opposite of memes, so information that's designed not to be reproduced or which in some way tries to destroy itself. So like secrets, um, passwords, uh, amnesia inducing effects, that kind of stuff would be anti-memetics and it is um, of the division, it's kind of like the X-Files but specialising in this particular type of phenomenon. It's kind of a bunch of stories, even though they're chronologically um, continuous and follow a lot of the same characters. I think it's best read as a series of short stories. I think if you try and read it as one novel then you can you get annoyed by like the pacing and the the jumps around and the changes in tone and I really like the first, um, the f not the first, like the second short story where it's a guy's like first day at work. That was my favourite. It acts slightly inspired or it was one of many things which inspired like a novel I'm writing, the new novel I've just started writing, even though I haven't finished the last one. Uh, yeah, I really I, I really enjoyed this. Um, check it out on the website if you're interested, or grab a copy. I think if you like The X-Files and a little bit of horror, or quite a lot of horror, um, and some sci-fi, you'd really enjoy this. I don't think the writer of this likes The X-Files very much, there are a couple of digs about how dumb the X-Files are <laughs> in this book. Um, but yeah, another short one, which is, you know, this isn't a very thematically cohesive list. How to be an anti-capitalist in the 21st century by Eric Olin Wright, which as you can imagine is a political science book. Very short, supposed to be like an introduction or an accessible way to learn about anti-capitalist theory, ideology and strategy. It's really good. It takes a very pragmatic approach, which I really liked, where it just says, I'm not going to debate about what good or bad capitalism has done so far throughout human history. We're just going to assess what we would like from our ideal society, whether we think that capitalism is the best way to reach that ideal state, 
and if so, how we might try and reform or deconstruct or destroy capitalism in order to reach the place that we are aiming for. I mean, obviously, he <laughs> concludes that, he, that capitalism is not the way. It's a foregone conclusion, he's like a left-wing thinker, but I thought it was kind of laid out in like a non-dogmatic, reasonable, accessible way, and I thought it was a very kind of neat and interesting book. But yeah, I think it because it provides such a, a basic but quite cohesive way of analysing society and how it functions and how it affects the lives of the people in it, I think it is like a useful framework book. Even if you're not hugely into left-wing politics, I think it provides a good way of analysing society. Yeah, I really liked this book. I would recommend it to anyone who wanted to like dip their toes into left-wing political thought, and it's a very short book. It is 176 pages. Then I read The Witch King by Martha Wells. She, Martha Wells, is best known for the Murderbot books, which I've heard a lot of good things about and they're always getting recommended to me, but this is the first thing of hers I've actually seen. It's a fantasy, not a sci-fi. I really liked the world building and the magic system. I thought it was quite unique. It kind of, like, the main character has been brought up in a kind of Mongolian steeps, steps style culture and it brings in a lot of kind of vibes from non-European cultures to inform its kind of aesthetic and, and, you know, fantasy lands, which is quite unusual and it's quite refreshing to read. It's got a very different magic system. The main character is a demon who hops between the dead bodies of mortals and uses pain to create magical power. Um, I can't say that I fully understand the magic system in this book. There was a lot of learning. There was a lot of world building for the length of the book. And I think there are some secrets or some mysteries which were not explained, which I imagine she's keeping for a sequel, which I think there will be. It's also a book with a lot of queer representation and quite an interesting way of talking about gender, which I think feels very organic. Demons don't really care about the gender of their human hosts when they switch bodies, and they're still referred to by their like demonic gender, which they, they carry with them from like the non-corporeal world that they're from and all the main characters are very gay and a lot of the different cultures have different views on um, different areas of sexuality and gender and I thought it was all very good and very interesting and also flowed very nicely with the story. So A plus for that. That being said, I didn't love the actual plot. It's... <sighs> Uh, so it's split between like a present and like a flashback sequence about 50-50 but they don't really merge together very well and you already know what will have happened in the flashback because you're, you start in the future and so it kind of robs it of all suspense and then the things that you learn from like following it through don't really feel like revelations and it was one of those things where it's like, I like these characters, I like these well, but why are we watching them do this specific thing? Like, why, why are we here at this moment? Why didn't the story start 50 years ago or 75 years ago or at a different point in time? That, that was my kind of gripe with this book. We'll happily read other things by this author. I think she's like very imaginative. I will, hopefully I'm gonna read like the Murderbot books and I'll give her another go because I think this book had a lot of promise. Another book which had a lot of promise but for me didn't quite like hit was Project Hail Mary by, by Andy Weir, which I've been seeing like everyone reading recently. Um, everyone, everyone's reading about that little guy with amnesia on his spaceship. Oh, I was really excited for this book. I thought it was going to be like really page turnery, really suspenseful, and that I was gonna not be able to put it down and finish it in like a day. Uh, it was fine. I didn't think it was as tense as like other people's reviews have indicated. Like I didn't really feel dragged along or like the stakes were all very distant and not very immediate. There was there was a nice unexpected friendship, which I think was like the 
you know, the centre of this book and, like, what really, like, stood out and what the only real thing of interest that I'll take away from it. Um, all the other stuff, like the actual project Hail Mary and, like, the science behind it and the, all the peripheral characters, I was like, this is fine. I don't really care. Like, I, I really, I haven't seen, read the book The Martian, but I've seen the film and I really enjoy it and I want to read that one. But this one I wasn't wasn't blown away. I thought it was just all right for sci-fi. Uh, last book which I read, which I thought was really, really good, which I want to tell you about, is Impossible Creatures by Catherine Rundell. This is a new book. I've seen it in all the bookshops. It's a middle grade book, middle grade fantasy, but it's really lovely. If you're someone, if you're a grown-up who reads a little bit of middle grade because you still have joy in your life, uh, or if you know know a kid, I really recommend this. It's it's a little bit quirky. It's very adventurous. It made me cry quite a lot, which I wasn't expecting when the ending rolled around. I I think I cry, cried for like two chapters straight. It caught me completely off guard because <laughs> I didn't think I was that emotionally invested, but apparently I was. It, it's about kind of an archipelago of hidden islands where all of the mythical creatures who used to live among, like, in the real world now live and it's very magical and it's not just like unicorns, there are some quirky creatures and some ones you might not know about because they're from more obscure sources and they're, they're in danger, the world, the archipelago is in danger, it's got to be saved and yeah, it's a really, it's a really lovely book, very readable, I'd recommend it. <laughs> And then last but not least is what I'm reading at the moment, which I'm really enjoying and which I'm very excited about. I haven't finished it, but I don't think I need to, to recommend it. Uh, and I don't need to recommend it to you because everyone already knows it's really good. Uh, yeah, and that is The Expanse um, by James Corey, which I've been meaning to read for years. I finally got around to, I am like halfway through Leviathan Wakes at the moment and it's great. I was really in the mood for some hard sci-fi and this book is completely hitting and it's got that real like pacey thrillery like one more chapter I need to, I'll just read for another bit <laughs> can't put it down quite now feeling which is very dangerous for a book that is again quite big I, I don't know I think it might be like the definitive depiction of what of what like a colonized solar system would look like I can't imagine anyone imagining it better or depicting it better than he has. Like the world building, the attention to detail and how everything works and how history has panned out and the politics and the economics are amazing. And if that makes it sound really boring, it's not. It's, it's really well written, it's really fun, it's really adventure-y. Yeah, I, I've, I've seen the first season of a TV show and I stopped watching it because I wanted to read the books. I think I prefer the books to the TV show but, you know, that's just pretty standard, isn't it? 